Hello everyone. I'm coming to you again with another episode of eBay Breaks. Um, and I've got a couple of items here that actually didn't win on eBay, but they're still bargains. I got I won them, uh, or I bought one of them, and I won another one from a group that I'm in now on uh, Facebook. That is a buy, sell, and trade group. And the card that I won, I actually won it in a raffle. That was a randomized raffle that um, uh, the owner of the card at the time uh, decided to put it up for raffle and it was a dollar chance there was they were going to sell like you know 50 chances and the owner I mean not the owner but the administrators of the group there's five of them when all the chances were sold one of the administrators of the group done a live video uh, with a webcam posting it to the group so you you know anybody that was happened to be online at the time could watch it I didn't see it till the next day they randomize a list of all the people that brought, uh, bought chances on the, winning the card. They do it um, basically like, okay, they sell 50 chances. It's going to be randomized 50 times. The last time that it's computerized or randomized, the name of the person and the chance that is at the top of the board screen when it is randomly mixed up you know computer generated randomized wins the card for one dollar I won this card it is a PSA 10 Jim Mint Bob Feller on card autograph and right here is the autograph Bob Feller if you don't know played in the 1930s 1940s and early 1950s for the Cleveland Indians he is a Hall of Fame legend they called him Rabbit, Rabid Robert Feller because he threw so hard. He was like the Nolan Ryan of his generation. And this card is a card that I could have only dreamed of owning when I was a kid. And I won it for a dollar in a raffle. On card autograph, and not only that, I mean, that is enough right there. Just Bob Feller's on card autograph, and he's deceased now. Meaning his autographs are only going to go up in value because he's not around anymore to sign autographs. And the fact that it's PS, it was sent into PSA and they give it a Jim Mint 10, you know, grade. Meaning the card is in perfect shape. And it's, you know, authenticated, you know, PSA DNA certified autograph. That is just... <laughs> you don't know how happy I was when I got this in the mail yesterday, and I won it for a dollar. Just one dollar spent on a raffle. Thrilled with that card. You cannot get better than a PSA 10 grade, and you can't get better than a Hall of Fame Famers autograph. Beautiful card. And I just wanted to share that with you, uh, you all. And um, this next one here is actually three more graded cards. I got all three of these actually from the same group, but not in a raffle. Um, I was really shocked when I seen this listed and I jumped on it. All three of these are graded cards. They were in a lot. And um, the seller posted a picture of all three of them together. And he said $5 tipped and shipped. And what that means, according to group rules, is it means that they were for sale for $5. And that included... You know, shipping it included the administrators of the group's uh, tip because usually they tip them like 10%. He said that he was liquidating his, you know, collection and he just wanted to get rid of these. They're graded cards. None of them are PSA graded. Um, two of them are graded by um, advancedgrading.com, which is another grading service you can send cards into. The other one is was graded by Mint um, Grading Service. I'll go ahead and show you this one. It is a, wait a minute, I'm sorry for the glare. This one is a Juan Gonzalez minor league card from 1988. This is not his first ever minor league card, but it is a minor league card. It, it was graded Jim 10, Jim Mint 10. All right. This next one um, is a Movon 1991 Fleer Update rookie card, Jim Mint 10 as well. And this was from the 91 Update series. And this last one is the one that I bought them for and why I jumped on it. 
because I've seen this card, whether it's graded by PSC, P, I mean PSA or uh, SGC or, you know, Beckett or anybody or even, you know, Jim or any other of the grading services out there. Jim Mint 10 versions of Biggio, Craig Biggio's rookie card always sell on eBay for in the 20 some dollar range. He is in the, this is a Hall of Fame player now. He's in the Hall of Fame. This is his 1989 Fleer rookie card. Jim Mint 10. And you can't get any better than that. I know it's not a PSA. But I'm, I've decided that if I'm going to, you know, if I'm going to, you know, in, invest any money into cards, it's going to be like when I used to collect years ago. And I'm going to go after Hall of Famers, and you don't get better than a Hall of Fame rookie card, unless you get a Bob Feller autograph card. But at any rate, I, I wanted it for this. I would have gave five dollars easily for this because it's well, you know, you can't find one of these a, a, a you know, a, a car, a rookie card of him graded in this good a shape for five bucks on eBay. You can't do it. The seller sent me all these. I bought them five bucks. Paid him with PayPal. Five bucks for all three of these together in a lot. That was it. Shipping it off, five bucks. You can't beat that. And what I'm going to do, honestly, this is going back with that Bob Feller. When my nephew's a little bit older, this this card will be belong to my nephew. In other words, I'm just holding it for my nephew because I'm collecting Hall of Famers to give to my nephew one day. And you just don't get better than a Hall of Fame, fame graded Jim Mint 10. I don't care who graded the card. And at five dollars, you just can't beat it. These other two, the Gonzalez and the Movon, are not Hall of Famers, although both of these guys were superstars during their career. And what my plan is, I'm going to take and I'm going to put these on eBay. Both of these cards have done a little investigation. I'm going to sell these on eBay and make some money. I'm going to get my money back for buying the whole lot, plus uh, make profit off of these two. And end up getting the Biggio Hall of Famer for free by doing that and making some money in the long run. Um, so if you're watching this and you have any interest in a Juan Gonzalez minor league uh, free rookie or a move on Fleer update rookie, Jim Mint 10, uh, comment in the comments below and let me know because I'm, going, I'm probably going to have both of these posted on eBay by tomorrow night. And once I have them posted on eBay, I'll be committed to selling them on eBay. And I don't see any reason why I can't get about 10 bucks a piece based on what these are, you know, these, especially this one right here. I've seen it already, several of them on eBay selling 10 $15 for this card graded Gem 10. And um, I, I don't, I've not found one of these on eBay, but what I have found on eBay is his Tops Rookie and his Clear Rookie and Score Rookie. Gem Mint 10s are selling for about 8 bucks. So I figure a minor league card, I'm going to get between 8 and 10 bucks as well. Gem Mint 10. You know, and it doesn't matter if it's PSA, it's still graded, beautiful card. Anyway, I was really pleased with that bargain. And those are my group bargains that I found. Now on to what I've been doing for a long time now, my eBay breaks. And let's see, I've got these out of the envelope now and um, ready for show. Okay. The first one here is, a, is actually a jersey, game-worn jersey card of Eric Hink. Hensky. I don't know if you can see the name, but it's Eric Hensky. And the pat, the white patch right there is his piece of his uh, former, uh, probably pants for the Blue Jays uniform. Um, at any rate, um, Eric Hens came up in probably about a decade ago with the Toronto Blue Jays, I believe. And he had a really big rookie year. They thought they had a young star on their hands. He never done nothing else again, but... I gave 65 cent free shipping for the hints and um, even you know common player jersey game worn memorabilia jersey patch cards even the common players you know most dealers are wanting for about four or five dollars a piece for them on eBay um, I got lucky because I found this from an individual dealer that just listed it starting out as a penny free shipping auction and um, 65 cent you can't go wrong with um uh out of i mean a game worn jersey card and right here on the back i don't think you can see it well enough to read all that little writing but that just authenticates that it was actually a piece of the game worn jersey 
And these cards are only going to go up in value, even of the common players. In 20 years' time, collectors, you know, down the road, they're not going to be caring as much. They're going to want cards like this more so, the inserts that are hard to find, even of common players, than they are base cards. And so those cards are only going to escalate in value quickly as years go by. This is another one that I got from the same seller. I gave 65 cents. Um, for the, I gave 65, I'm sorry, I gave 65 cents for the Hensk and 45 cents for this one. This is Billy Hall. I'm really disappointed in this one because the seller, it was free shipping, but the, and, you know, 45 cents, how can I complain? But see these three letters. The seller said it was a, he advertised it as a near mint condition, triple, uh, patch triple patch card meaning he was saying all three of these were jer pieces of jersey when they call it a triple patch and it does look like that at first glance doesn't it but when you pull the card out of the top load and look at it there's a jer piece of a jersey in here but these two no jersey that's just part of the top of the card part of the you know, it's just flat. There's no piece of jersey in that. So that right there was false advertisement. It's only a single patch, not a triple patch. And another reason I was, even though I got it for 45 cent free ship and I can't complain that much, he said it was near mint condition and more than likely it might have been because I went back and looked at the scan and I can't see any damage on the card in the scan of the pictures on eBay when it, where I bought it from. But the card actually has a crease right here going down from the corner of the patch and another crease going up from the patch to here it's only a small one but you can see it when you especially you know you might not can on here but you can definitely see it when i pull it up so that's why why i couldn't see it on ebay i can't see it right here on the card but when i hold it up here to the light and look at it it's plain as day right here and right here Another thing, these corners up here on top, both of them are a little bit dented or dinged. So it's not near mint or mint. Um, the crease alone makes it about only a very good grade, which means the card is worth about what I paid for, 45 cents, even though it's game one. I mean, you know, it in time it'll be worth more, but I mean, it was advertised better than this. And I think what happened, the seller put this thick, jersey cards are very thick. And I think what happened is the seller, because he didn't have it in the top load on the pictures on eBay, I think he took it when he was going to ship it and tried to shove it down in the standard top load. And the problem with that is you really need to take jersey cards and put them in the single screw, thicker, a little bit thicker cases because these aren't big enough for them. And a lot of the thicker jersey cards, game worn jersey, you're going to have problems with them creasing. Probably what he'd done, he tried to get it down in here. It was too tight, and he shoved it and bent the corners and put the crease in it. And I'd say that's what happened, but for 45 cents, and then I got 65 cents on the hints. In other words, I got two jersey cards from him, game-worn jersey cards, for a buck, basically. And, I mean, if I wanted to put these on eBay, I don't know about this one now with that crease, because I would be honest about it, but if both of them were in regular, like the hints, I could easily, if I put them on there and I was willing to wait, to, you know, a little bit, I could get four bucks for them a piece. Probably pretty easy. Um, or three dollars plus a dollar shipping or something like that. Pretty easy. And um, But those won't be done. Uh, those will be my nephews one day. Because um, I'm actually buying up bargain game use stuff or autograph stuff or Hall of Famers and putting back to give to him as he's when he's old enough to appreciate things and take better care of cards. And these last two I got, as I wrap this video up, Juan Gonzalez Tops Rookie Card, 1990 Tops. I only gave six cents free shipping. The top load alone is worth that much. Um, and um, it's not really worth a whole lot in the book value, maybe a dollar. But I'm going to give that card to my nephew now. And um, six cents free shipping, I just got a you know a cheap way of um, increasing my feedback score on Facebook I mean on uh, eBay pretty easy same thing with this one 
This is a 1990 Tops Mike Scott, who was an all-star for several years, but um, he was he's no Hall of Famer. But six cent free shipping, I get an easy, quick feedback score. You know, helps my feedback score. I'll give this card to my nephew now, and um, and so these two go to my nephew now. These are just you know, I, like I said, I put these up. I buy these when I can find them dirt cheap. Because I know they're going to go up in value as time goes by. Game one memorabilia. I put them up. I'll give them to my nephew when he's an older teenager. And, um, and I'll tell you the truth. This one right here. This Bob Feller. I gave anything for a card like this with Hall of Famer's autograph on it when I was a kid. I'll sure never sell this card. And it'll be my nephew's one day. If anybody ever sells it, it'll be him after I'm dead and gone. But... Jim Mint 10, you can't get better than that. I'm very pleased with that. And like I said, I'm also getting this right here. These three Jim Mint 10 graded cards for five bucks for all of them. The BGO is awesome hit. Hall of Famer. Jim Mint 10. That'll be uh, put, kept and put back. The only cards I'm willing to sell will be these. Um, and I'm going to look to put these on eBay. I'll get my money back for what I paid for all of those. Plus, um, make a profit overall, which I'll turn around and use to, you know, buy my nephew a few more cards eventually when I find bargains. But that's what I look for, and that's what you should look for. There is bargains on eBay, and if you're on Facebook, join the Facebook group. You can find bargains on sports cards. They're out there. There's several groups buy, sell, and trade. I hope you liked this video, and I want to thank you for watching. Check out some of my other videos, and, um, if you have interest in either one of these two cards, comment on the video down below because, like I said, I want to have these posted on eBay um, by tomorrow night. Probably to buy it now, bid. But, um, you know, if you're interested in the comment and I see it tonight um, after I upload this video, we might can work something out before I even list them. Uh, thanks again for watching. Hope you all have a great night. And if I don't make another video beforehand, hope you all have a great Christmas. Thank you.